What is the meaning of life? That's the question we're discussing on this program each day. What is the point of life? Uh, what's the purpose in your being alive at this moment? Uh, how come you're here? Why do you exist? None of us are really satisfied with the idea that it all came about by sheer chance and there's no point or purpose in any of it because we perceive that within the system that we have here, either the political system, the social system, the educational system, or the physical system, or the uh, ast astronomical system, there is order and there is purpose. And so it just doesn't make sense to us that within something that there is order and design, that thing itself has no purpose or order in it. We simply cannot accept the illogicality of that. So most of us sense there has to be some point in us being here. There must be. We don't know what it is, but there must be some purpose in it. And that's what we're discussing. What is the meaning of life? What is the purpose in our existence? Why are we alive? Why are you alive? Uh, how come you exist now and didn't before? Why did that happen? And uh, we've been discussing this for probably about eight months now, so you can guess that we have gone through a lot of the intellectual underpinnings and undergirdings that such a discussion requires. And we have discussed the reasons for believing that there is an intelligent personal being somewhere behind the universe. And we have begun to examine the evidence that such a being expressed himself in the first century of our era through a remarkable human being that differed from all the other great religious leaders in that he was able to destroy death. He was able to come back to life again after he had been killed. And he obviously had ability to go into the world beyond space and come back into space whenever he chose. And that's the man that we know as Jesus of Nazareth. And if you want to examine the arguments for believing that he lived and that he was a historical figure, and then believing that he actually did and said the things that he is reported to have done and said, and then examine why it is evident that he is more than an ordinary human being, then please do write to the address at the end of the program and catch up by listening to some of those early cassettes of the broadcasts. But we have reached the point where we have concluded that he is the son of the maker of the universe and that his explanation of the meaning of life is the only one, therefore, that is authoritative or valid. And that is the one that we've been studying uh, these past few weeks. And, of course, one of the things that he makes very clear is that his father made us because he wanted others like himself to love. And so his father made you because he wants a friend. He wants someone whom he can love. That's why he created you. He didn't create you just to do the job that you do here on earth. He didn't create you to go out like a light after the breath uh, disappears from your body. He made you to actually love him and have a friendship with him. And that's why he made you like him. That is, he gave you the same capacities as he has. He gave you capacities on three different levels. On a physical level, your body, by which you are able to perceive through your five senses the world of people and things and circumstances. Your soul, which is really the psychological part of you, your mind, emotions and will, by which you are able to reflect upon yourself, the self-conscious part of you. And then the spirit part of you, the innermost part, the very essence of you. And it's there that you perceive him himself. And that's the part that we've been talking about this past week particularly. How is your spirit meant to work? And you probably have had some experience of it, even though you haven't known. At times I know that you've sensed what I've sensed. You've 
you've been sitting in a room by yourself and you've somehow sensed that there's a certain thing that you should do. There's something that you should do. You've sensed that there's a certain job that you would be good at. There's a certain career that uh, is right for you. You've sensed something deep down within you telling you that that's the thing to do. Or at times, often we talk about women's intuition, and at times you ladies have it apparently more strongly uh, in a natural way than we men. But at times you'll just know you ought to do a certain thing. You'll just know a certain person is thinking something. And you'll know it deep down inside. Now, what that is, is the remnants of your spirit. Most of us, of course, have spirits that are long ago dead, that can't sense anything from their creator at all, because we've been driven so much by our external needs of security and significance and happiness that our little bodies have driven us to do everything we've done. And so we're driven by the need for food, we're driven by the need for clothing, we're driven by the need for shelter, and that drives us to try to get jobs that give us good money, and then we want other people to think well of us, so we're driven by ambition. And so most of us are driven by all kinds of external animal needs and drives and impulses, and our spirits long ago have died so that we no longer can hear them speak. But the fact is, that we were originally meant and are meant today to live our lives by the intuition of our spirits. In other words, there's a part of you inside that has certain capacities that give you the only direction in your life that is actually valid for you. Because you are different from all the rest of us, You are a unique creation of the maker of the universe and he puts into you in this inner part of your being called your spirit, he puts into you the sense of what he wants you to do at different times. And that part of you is called your spirit. And uh, that's how this man Jesus explained it. He said, your spirit is the place where my father communicates with you. And uh, we've talked over the uh, indications of what the Spirit does, and we haven't wanted to bother a lot with detailed quotations from the Bible, but if you want those, I'll certainly be glad to send them to you. But if you follow them through, you find that your Spirit has the capacity not only of intuition, but also of conscience. In other words, what we call conscience, the that part of us that makes us want to live up to the best that we know, judges us according to what comes through our intuition. And then our intuition catches what our maker wants us to do through our communion with him. And that's another capacity or function of our spirits, the ability to commune with God. And that's where we actually have relationships with God, not through outward things, not even through the beautiful churches that some of us may look at or go to, not through rituals or choirs or even through speakers, but primarily through God speaking to us within our spirits. And that's where you alone are able to communicate with your God. There is a piece Uh, If you want just one reference, there is a piece in one of the new books of the New Testament in the Bible. Uh, In Mark chapter 2 and verse 8, you read, And immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, Why do you question thus in your hearts? That was the occasion, you may remember, when some people let their friend down through a roof who was paralyzed so that he could heal them. And he said to the friend, your sins are forgiven you. And of course, the, all the religious leaders were sitting around kind of thinking and whispering in their hearts that this guy was just bluffing. And that's where it says, and immediately Jesus perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves. And in your spirit, you're able to perceive things that normally you couldn't perceive through the psychological apparatus you have. So that's what we're saying. Our spirits are something more than the deductions that we make from an unconscious 
inductive operation of our intellects. It's something deeper than that. Our spirit is actually receiving signals from our maker that give us direction in our lives. Let's talk a little more tomorrow, just once more, about how those spirits of ours are meant to operate in connection with the rest of our personality.